So I've just spent a couple of hours sorting out my diary and calendar for next year. Um, next year I'm gonna be retired, so I'm hopefully gonna get a camper van and I just wanna plan out where I'm going when, what sort of time of year I wanna to go to various places so that I don't miss anything. I feel like I've missed autumn a bit this year because where I live, autumn's come late, but actually where the color is in the Lake District, like where I am now, it's beautiful. I've, I've missed it, it's a bit late, so I don't want that to happen next year. And I thought, therefore, I'd share a video with you about planning and what I do for my photography. Enjoy the video. So first of all, where do you go? Um, and how do you know about these locations? Where do you find them? Well, there's lots of places to get inspiration from. Uh, YouTube, obviously. Uh, Instagram, I'd say people post lots of pictures. Obviously Facebook, we're in the Thumbs Up Photography Facebook group, which is a brilliant source of inspiration, growing all the time. And people put really good pictures up in there and I think, oh, I wonder where that was taken. So that's a, a good place to get inspiration from. And another thing you can do, if you're not sure about inspiration, where to go, is um, look at these books. So I've got some books here. I've got quite a few of these. This is the uh, photo view, photographing the Lake District, uh, written by Stuart Holmes. I think these guys write their own books. Um, sometimes they use images from other people, but generally, these are guys, a bit like Justin Mind in Essex, who go around photographing. And these are really, really useful. I've got parking spots, which you just with just a QR code. Absolutely brilliant. It tells you about the ideas. There's three, maybe three pictures to take, where to take them from, and then of course you can arrive on scene and go and change and go and scout around and see if you can find something even more interesting. So that's one of them. The other series, which I recommend, is the Photographer's Guide. These are smaller and handier. They don't tend to come with a QR code, but there's certainly grid references in here. And these are definitely commissioned by other photographers. So I think Ellen, Ellen Bonus, I think she publishes them all and she approaches photographers for um, and for inspiration or for pictures. And you can see that they're not quite, I don't think these are quite as thorough, but they're still a really good starting point. You can see that I've bookmarked a few um, that I like to go back to. I've also used what three words. If I find a location that I really like, I mark the parking spot on a what three words and save it into a separate folder. And that works really, really well for finding your way back to locations. So once you've got all your locations that you want to go to, the next thing to do is to think about the time of year you want to photograph them. And that's where the diary and the calendar really helps. So obviously autumn in Woodland is a prime example of something that needs to be done at certain times of year. There are other shoots that need to be considered as far as times of year is concerned. For instance, Southwold Pier, which I really like to shoot, normally works best for me in March, April, when the sun is in the right place, because as the earth travels around the sun in a year, the, the sun rising is, is in the east, but it can vary an awful lot. And there are apps that can help you visualize that. Things like the photographer's Ephemeris, which I, I don't use really. Um, I tend to sort of roughly work out where I want to go when, but if you, if you don't know that and you're interested, go and have a look at it. Google Earth, I think is also good for plotting things, especially to locations that are new to you. That's not to say that you should copy people, but actually going to a place where somebody's taken some good photographs is often a good start because then you can work your way around the image. You can find different compositions and you can also think about the time of year and you need to be visiting. So at the moment, I've seen lots of woodland pictures as you'd expect because we're in November and October or the end of October, the start of November is prime woodland time. So not surprising, lots of really good images. And what I'm doing is I'm making notes of those locations where these places are, where people have had success. 
I'm just making a note about where I want to go next year. So I'm going to try and book out myself 10 days to go and tour and photograph woodland um, around about this time of year. I want to stick away from the school holidays if I can, but that's not always possible. So we'll see how we go. Um, and that's all planned in my diary. And now my diary is an online diary, which I share with my wife so she knows where we are uh, and we can work out together what we're doing when. So once you've found your images and your subjects, if you like, the places you want to go and you've worked out the time of year, what do you do next? Well, it depends on what sort of photograph it is. If it's a seascape, what I tend to do is look at the tide tables. That They can be very important. So, for instance, if I go to Haysborough, where I've taken these pictures, I know that Haysborough, to get on the beach and get the groin pictures that I want to get, I have to have a low tide. So that is going to influence my uh, time of arrival or what day I'm going to go, because if I, if I want a low tide at sunrise, then that only happens once every couple of weeks or around about two or three days either. So that is important. If I want high tide, then I would go a completely different week. So all of that needs taken into account. These beach huts, for instance, at OC Island, lovely photograph, but you have to have a high, high tide. So when you can visit those, it's pretty much limited by the tide. So that's something to bear in mind. Okay, so we're two or three days in now, or two or three days away from the shoot. What do we do next? We've got the tide sorted out, we know where we're going, or we may be going inland to photograph something in the autumn and the leaves are turning. What do you do next? Well, the next thing to check is the weather forecast. I'm a firm believer that some images suit a certain kind of weather. So for instance, if I go to sky and photograph Elgol, I think that looks better under a stormy sky. It looks really nice. I've photographed it in sunset and sunrise and it doesn't look quite so good. It doesn't look a nice picture, pinky sunrise just doesn't do it for me with El Gol. So that comes into play a little bit, but you may have booked the time off work. You may be limited to what you're going to do. So you may have to adapt. But if you have a choice on weather and whether or not to go out or not, the weather is very important. I use apps like the YR app, which I think is really, really good because it gives you an hourly picture of what's going to happen. Some weather fronts come in quicker, some weather fronts come in slower. Um, it's not an exact science, but it's not normally that far out. And it might well be that I've got two or three locations in mind in an area, and if I'm going to have lots of cloud, I might go to one rather than the other because that kind of suits the shot or the mood of the shot. Um, so those are things to bear in mind. But ultimately, I would always say, if you've got a choice, get out there. You'll always find something to photograph. So don't be too tied up with that. But certainly if you can, it makes a difference. Okay, so you're ready to go. You've got a couple of days for the shoot. I would always urge you, if you can, to go and scout out a location the day before, or certainly have been there before. For instance, tomorrow, I'm gonna to go to Hall's Water in the lakes, and I'm hoping to get out tonight to go and scout it out. It's looking a bit unlikely now, but I wanna actually drive there and see what it looks like in the daylight, because I'm looking for a path to go up to a viewpoint, and I don't really wanna be doing that in the dark. Yes, I can wear a head torch. Yes, I can work out when I get there, um, and that may well be what we have to do. but. Ideally, you want to know your location, you want to know where you're going to park, and what I will often do is once I've parked up, I will then do a map back to, or a driving map back to my location that I'm staying at to find out the exact timings, because that is important for the next stage. So scout out your area. The books are really good for that, because these books have got photographs in from pretty much the location. Um, so that's almost like the picture you're going to be getting roughly. So they are quite good to visualise it. But it's good to get your own take on things. And sometimes you can work out compositions, certainly in woodland. And again, what three words works really well. So when you're in the dark, you can follow it and find your way back to what you were looking at.
the day before. Okay, we're now at the night before the shoot. What do we do? Well, obviously, everything needs charging up, so make sure you've got all your gear. I will have to leave it all packed in this bag once it's charged up and leave the bag by the front door in case I forget it, <laughs> which I won't. But the bag's all packed, ready to go. I've got a young a family, so I often get my clothes out in another room and I'll go and get dressed really quickly. Um, so the clothes are out, the cameras are all packed, everything's ready to go, batteries charged, you've got SD cards in plus some spares. Uh, clothing, depends on where you're going and the time of year. This time of year, hat, maybe a coat, waterproof trousers or certainly trousers that are rugged enough plus boots depends on what sort of location you're going to but make sure you're properly dressed it's best to be too warm uh, than freezing cold on location so bear that in mind get everything out get everything laid out um, have it all laid out ready to go so the next thing to do is to make sure you know what time to set the alarm so what do i do well in the previous step we talked about recording the time or working out the time it takes from your location to on location. So that might be a 25 minute drive. So that works back. So sunrise time, let's say it's seven o'clock, 25 minute drive. That means to get to sunrise would take me, well, I need to leave at 6.35, but I like to give myself 10 minutes either way. It depends on how far you've got to walk when you get there. I might arrive on location and have a 10 minute walk. That makes that 35 minutes. So that all works out. So the drives, uh, the first thing, how long is it going to take? How long is it going to take me to get on site? I then leave another hour. So I like to be on site an hour before sunrise, especially on the coast. I think that's really, really important because actually on a coastal picture, on a seascape, the sun and the sunrise is what often makes a seascape. And there is nothing worse than turning up or driving to a location with a beautiful sunrise above, only to find that it's died once you've arrived. If you're going up a mountain or you want a moody picture or there's no, not going to be a lot of light anyway, then obviously that's not so important. If you're going to do woodland photographs, you want to be after sunrise slightly anyway, so that's all important. After that, I normally give myself about half an hour, time to wake up, get up, get dressed, have a cup of coffee. Um, and then once I've had a cup of coffee, grab the car keys, Grab the camera, grab the cameras, and off I go. So for instance, tomorrow, Horsewater is a 25 minute drive. I don't know how long the climb is gonna be, so I'm gonna give myself 15 minutes, and then I'm also gonna give myself an hour. So I'm gonna be leaving here about quarter to six, something around there should be fine. I'm gonna ready to get to the location. Set the alarm. If you need to set an alarm twice, do that, if you're that sort of person. I normally find that I'm awake before the alarm goes off anyway. And the most important thing after that then is to go and get yourself some sleep. So the day of the shoot, all that's left is to put everything into practice. Get up, have your coffee, have your cup of tea, something to eat maybe. Grab your bag that you've already packed, jump in the car and off you go to location. Um, and you might find that, in actual fact, the weather apps are wrong and the weather's completely different to what you're expecting. In which case, I'd always suggest you have two choices really, or three choices, back to bed, never do that. Um, second choice is go somewhere else and change your mind, which then puts all your planning out the window a little bit. So I'm always very cautious of that. And the third choice is the one that I recommend, go anyway and see what happens because you'll often find that you'll find an image that works even with weather conditions you weren't expecting. Okay, you can't have visualized it and it's not what you were expecting, but it means you're gonna come back anyway and do it again if it doesn't work out. But go and try, give it, give it a go um, and see what you can, what you can do. Uh, I would always go and do that. Um, and, and with that, what I'll do is I'll take you on location. So now, you're now gonna to see tomorrow when I'm gonna to go to Hawes Water Reservoir and see what I can find. See you in a minute.
and now you've done all your planning, you just need to do the shoot, relax. Um, today actually a bit of classic case of not planning 100% because I was going to come here last night and just suss it out. We're at Hawes Water today and there's some photography to be had but I meant to come here last night find out exactly where I needed to go but unfortunately um, the time I finished filling the car up with electric it was too dark so I've decided to resort to Google Maps looking at the photography books as I've just mentioned and now I found a parking space and I'm actually now following the light we've got a really nice scene in front of us I'll show you now looking really good so what I've got to do now is find somewhere to climb up and I found a little gate about um, half a mile from the car so I parked the car where it's not going to be in the way and now I'm just walking a half a mile back to the gate that I found driving past we'll see if we can't get some pictures of horse water I'll see you when I get there well this has worked out really well um, haven't parked that far away and we're just the side of the road a little footpath I found this lovely outcrop we'll show you in a second and what I'm doing now is just got another 10 minutes before sunrise so I'm a bit late but actually there's a load of clouds today which I knew about there'll be a little bit of light above that and actually in the hills and the fells light coming through the valley is quite nice so not too bad timing wise just going to look now for a bit of composition we've got lots as you can probably see behind me lots of heather which isn't in bloom because this is not the right time of year but if I flick you around what I'm looking at now is it's all about the atmosphere of those clouds it's all about trying to get this little island in and I'm going to fly the drone so I'm just going to try and find something here with a bit of foreground maybe a rock a little bit sticking up something like that one there and that's going to be the shot um, so here we go let me get set up and I'll talk you through this one cool right so found a lovely bit of rock here a bit of heather which is it's the wrong time of year for the heather but it still looks quite nice um, ISO 64 and what's good about this shot is the fact that this lovely bit of rock and this heather make a nice foreground which kind of frame the lake the Halls Water Reservoir and it's all about the cloud sitting over the mountains here um, I'm looking at about two seconds at f11 and with this geared head just tweak this um, on the back of the camera or actually I'll show you through the camera in a second but the clouds look a little bit overexposed but there is they, they certainly aren't because I can see the histogram but there is some light just kicking on the, the high level cloud which is just above this low hanging stuff so actually this looks really nice I just need to make sure that I don't lose the highlights um, so the sky is what I'm looking at on the histogram yeah that's telling me there's a little bit so I, just to be really sure this is a situation where you could bracket if you wanted um, but I don't think I need to with the Nikon I don't normally but that's there's a darker version so focusing is on the edge of this rock f11 I'm going to get most things in focus um, the other thing to consider is whether I'd need to focus stack this so we might do another one again which I'm going to focus on the mountains in the background. So I've got two images, one focused here, one focused on the mountains, and I've got two exposures, one for the foreground, one for the sky. That's the kind of carry, um, cover everything um, situation or the thing that you can do. Um, I think I'm probably end up, going to end up using just one of those images though, because I think there's going to be cover in this. It looks really nice actually. Beautiful day, absolutely wonderful and planning finding this thing this place is out something that i highly recommend it's um i haven't planned this brilliantly but i planned enough so that i've got here knowing roughly what i'm going to expect um, and then actually 
I've then reacted to what I've seen and followed the light and found the composition, which is where the, I guess the skill, if you can call it that, or the creativity comes in. Right, let me just show you quickly through the camera the composition and then we'll head back to the office and I'll show you this as a finished image. So let's just take you into the camera. Now this is what I'm looking at roughly. Uh, we know that the aspect ratio of this video is slightly um, more cropped than the actual image because I'm getting a 16 by 9 on this video and the actual image is going to be bigger. But that's roughly what a 16 by 9 looks at. It's kind of a circular um, composition, so everything goes round. We've got the island here on one of the thirds, and then we've got the gate or the, the gap here as, as the mountains go off. It's all about the cloud at the top. I'm going to darken all this down a little bit. It's going to look quite nice. Not going to make this too moody, I don't think. I don't see it as a particularly dark and moody shot, but certainly there's detail, as you can see, in these clouds. And this is the bit that I'm looking to make sure through the histogram that I'm capturing because this stuff here will, will lift out anyway. Um, that's really, really nice. Um, so, so what I'll do now is I'll just see if I can find any more compositions. Might do a portrait version. I'll get the drone up and I'll see you back in the office and I'll show you what the actual image looks like. And there we go, some nice images, I hope. I had the drone up, I've shot some photographs with the Z7 II, which I really enjoyed using again. And uh, really, really lucky, really happy with the light, actually. I wasn't expecting anything at all today. It was gonna be a dark and moody picture. And it is kind of dark, but we had a little bit of light, which is also nice. And uh, you didn't see that, because I was busy getting excited. Um, so there we go, I hope you've enjoyed that video on planning. Um, is there anything I've missed that you do that I haven't done, in which case just leave it in the comments below and maybe we'll do a, a follow-up video. But um, planning is really important. You of course can do it on the spur of the moment and you have to be ready to do that. You can just drive around uh, and, and photograph and that can be fun, but I prefer to take all of the stress out of everything by having everything ready to go. Uh, and that's the process that I go through. So. Uh, thanks so much for watching here come the photographs and until next week like and subscribe if you haven't already see you soon Ta -ra.